Right, today's rehab session is a special one on stability and strengthening for your neck. Now this is going to be for those of you who are struggling with a bit of neck pain or postural weakness in your neck and you're looking for some great exercises, then these are for you. I'm going to use two different types of balls to give you two different options. So if you've got a Pilates ball like this or a Swiss ball like this at home or in the gym, then we're going to go through some exercises to help you strengthen up or stabilize the front of your neck the side and the back. Now, these are very similar to the ones I did with a band. So using band going backwards or band going forwards, that sort of thing, or even pushing back into a foam pad. But they're just a little bit different because you're pushing into a squishy ball and it gives you that nice, even resistance to do. And hey, it's pretty easy to do at home in the gym. So let's go through each one and I'll show you the different ways you can do if you've got the different apparatus. So first one, what you do for side flexion. So this is working on the muscles on the side of your neck to try and help your stability on this side. So what you're going to do is work on a kneeling position like this. Now, this sort of stuff looks a little bit awkward in the gym. So some people want to keep doing this at home rather than the gym because it looks a bit funny, but trust me, this is the sort of stuff that makes your neck better as far as it feels stronger, doesn't feel as weak, and also helps tackle pain from postural strain, if you like. So if your, your neck is in a sort of bad position, you're getting strain through your back of your you know, neck, and you're getting pain from that, this is going to help alleviate it and strengthen it up at the same time. But some people like doing it at home. So with this one, what you're aiming to do is put the ball on the side of your head, like where your ear is, if you like, more the sort of top part here, if you look on this side, top out there on the other side. You're going to try and look straight ahead. What you don't want is this ball, your, obviously your neck on an angle like that. You want to be absolutely straight here to start with. I'm just propping that ball just on your shoulder and then your head resting here. Now at the moment, I've got no pressure through that. So what I'm going to try and aim to do is push in just gently with my body. So my whole body just moves in. I don't want to tilting my head in, okay, I'm not trying to do side flex and do that, I'm trying to resist load. So I'm trying to maintain an upright posture and then push in and resist load, okay? So the ball is trying to push me that way. I'm trying to use muscles here to pull me that way, okay? So this is like an anti-side bend if you like, it's an isometric hold. Now, I can already feel my core working here. I've actually got to sort of switch on muscles through my legs, switch on muscles through my abdominals to try and hold myself in a static posture that way just to keep that. So this is great because it's helping me neuromuscularly connect my neck through my spine, through my core, which is one of the big problems is people, when they've got neck pain, is they're a bit lazy in their lower back and their head pops forward. So if you're sitting down and you're flexed in your lower back and you're in that sort of c-shape your head's going to pop forward you're just going to put a lot of strain load on that over time so you know this sort of strengthening is strengthening not just your neck you got to think it's strengthening all of it right down through your spine which is at the end of the day that's what you need for when you're sitting and standing to maintain that good posture through your neck stop the pain so that's your side bending one now if you're going to do that in the small boy say hey i haven't got a small boy i've got a i haven't got a big boy i've got a small ball it's pretty hard to get in there and do it. You can sort of get in, but if you're a sort of a wide person with big shoulders, you're not gonna, it's too far away. So what you're gonna have to do with this one is get a little bit closer perhaps and go one leg forward. So you can sort of rotate away and then you're gonna be able to do that side bending like that. So I'd probably do this one standing just so you can sort of rotate away like that. And so you've got a firm base of support out here. It's just much easier to do it that way. And again, same sort of drill. You're gonna push in gently with the whole body through here. I don't find this one as effective as the kneading one. The kneading one gives me a lot more sort of core work through here, but hey, if you're stuck with this, you can still do it that way. The other option that some people do is they pad it out a little bit. So what you can do is grab something like a foam pad, and so if you've got something extra like this, or even a pillow if you like, you can go back down into your kneading position, have it a little bit wider, all right? And then your shoulder size is not really a problem. So again, you can come in here and then, then you can work on that core work and just keep yourself upright and then move your body inwards and try and resist that. So of course, both sides. Now, how long for? Aim for 30 seconds. So sort of not the maximum you can do, but just about, because if you go too hard, you're gonna compensate too much. You want just a little bit of load to start off with until you get used and conditioned to it. 
but 30 seconds is a good marker. So whatever you can comfortably do with a bit of low for 30 seconds, then try and build up to a minute. And I'd try and sort of do two to three each side every session you do, and that might be maybe three or four sessions a week, okay? So there's your side flexion one. Now, to do your attraction one, that's a little bit harder um, set up, but what I would do is again, you've got to be kneeling with this one with the ball. And that goes in here. Now, some people call it an extension, some people call it a retraction. You've just got to work on what you need most. Now, retraction is definitely going straight back. Extension is going upwards, but with the ball, if you do that, it's going to roll. So technically, it's sort of the same thing for this type of exercise. Because if you're pushing backwards, you're sort of pushing retraction as well. The only thing about retraction is you're using a lot of muscles here. So I would go for retraction. For this sort of exercise, try and think about, if you look at me this way, try and think about the movement is there, not there. Okay, so when I push into the ball, I'm trying to push backwards into the ball, and then I'm using both sets of muscles here. If I'm just extending, I'm just using the back. So I like doing a co-contraction with this one. Maybe put your foot up against there as a sort of a marker, and then that goes around the back. It depends how big the ball is as well. Again, you can rest this just down on the top of your shoulder there. Okay, so just resting on the top of my shoulder. I don't want to be pushed forward, so I've got to be sort of feel like it, when it comes down, it's just resting there, okay? Again, same sort of drill. I can really work on my core. I can switch my glute on. I can sort of stretch my hip flex a little bit, try and maintain upright here as much as I can. Once I've got all that on, then I can just push a little bit in here, but I'm mostly pushing chin in. Okay, I'm stabilizing there. Chin in, push backwards using the back of my neck and my throat and holding it there. And that's a really nice way of trying to maintain an retraction isometric position there. Okay. Now if you think about it, that strengthening is helping me sit, maintain that position here in an upright position. Okay. And a lot of the time when you do these sort of exercises, once you finish, like you're pushing and pushing and pushing, not too hard, then when you release off, you feel quite good because all the muscles have activated. It's like doing bicep curls in the gym and they're all pumped up. Same through here, which helps support the neck. So you'll probably find, if once you get into this sort of thing, you get into doing these things for sitting and standing posture for your neck and strengthening, trying to stabilize that spine, you push in there and hold it there for 30 seconds at a time. Remember, more here and there than down here. You've got this on, but you're still doing more here. Once you've done that sort of two or three sets of 30 seconds, you'll probably find when you come away from it, that neck feels quite good because all those muscles are supporting it. Pain drops down a little bit. So how do you do that if you've only got this little ball? Well, obviously, you're too far away kneeling. So again, the big ball is preferable, but if you've only got a Pilates ball, and listen, even if you don't have that, you could probably use a folded up pillow if it's big enough, as you back onto that wall, okay? So here, and you've got to get yourself away. Obviously, if you're too far, your head's going to be too far forward. So you've got to be enough away, almost like just about a ball width away from there. And again, you've got to try and push in and retract in. So think about pushing back against the ball and chin and holding it there. Now you have to push through your feet a little bit. You're a little bit more unstable because it's a longer lever through here and you've only got a small base of support. Whereas when I was kneeling, I had a larger base of support, so I was much more stable. I could put a lot more power through it. Okay, so again, if, you're in doubt, if you've only got that, that's fine. Go for the big ball. Now, last one, flexion. So this one here, what I like doing is, this is almost like a bit of planks for your neck, if you like. The flexion one looks really odd in the gym, but again, you might want to do this one at home. Set the ball up facing this way. So it's almost like the retraction one, where you sort of get yourself in until you, are, you feel like you're in an upright position. Sometimes looking that way in the mirror to see how far away your head is from the ball is quite handy. But this goes right in the forehead there. Again, core on, glutes on. Get that ball in position and then push inwards, okay? Now try not to push in with your body, don't just lunge in. It's actually pushing in with your head without, this is the hard part, without sticking your head forward, okay? So some people, what I get them to do if they're struggling with the pushing forward position is go in a little bit more than they should and then push in and then they'll be a neutral, if that makes sense. So once I've hold it there, if I'm a neutral, ear over shoulder, over hip, in this position here, I'm really working hard. You can see these muscles working, switching on here. 
This is the isometric strengthening work for the front. I can still talk, so it's not too hard. And I'm just really concentrating on keeping an even pressure into that ball, okay? And that's a really nice one to do. So many of these exercises people just don't do, right? They say the, the neck exercises, when we talk to physio, other physios, neck exercises are the most non-compliant of all exercises that we give people. So, you know, that's probably sometimes why people don't get their neck problems right. But if you can get stuck into this sort of stuff, I'll guarantee you that you'll see improvements in your stability and your strength and hopefully that reduction in pain. Last one, obviously the same sort of thing doing with a small ball. Again, similar to like when you're pushing backwards, you're going to lose your base of support a little bit. It's going to be a little smaller. You're going to find it harder to put as much power through, but if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. So same sort of drill. What I'd like to do is maybe go in a bit, sort of a bit too far, and then you're out with your neck, and then obviously you're going to push in with your neck here, so then you are even. So might, this may take a bit of practice, because you don't want to be on too far and have your head out. You don't want to be too far out and have to push your head in. You've got to find the right position, how far away from the wall you are. So when you do go inwards, you've got a little bit of load here, you're nice and even. You can work on your core stability here, try and get that posture right in here. So you're trying to train your brain, your muscle, that when I stand and have all these muscles on, these are helping as well. So you're trying to program that brain, if you like, into a better postural system. So. That's your ball exercises for your neck. Stability, strength, great ones we give them to our clients. Try them at home. See you next time.